At this year's Huntsville Ham Fest, I ran into Prepcom, and they have a new MMX Nomad device, which kind of looks like a cyber deck that was uh, 3D printed and has a keyboard and a little screen that you can use. It's a radio. You can use it to decode CW, Morse code, and transmit it. Uh, you can type in the person's call sign and hit a button, and it will answer them if, if you hear a station calling that you can decode. But instead of me just talking as usual, it's, it's going to be better if I just bring you over to the device and do my best to demonstrate how it functions, and then I will let you decide what your thoughts are. So this is the Nomad. It is a 3D printed case, and we've got a series of I.O. in the back here. There's an on-off button. This has two, like, 18650, sorry, four. I think it's a little bit larger than the 18650s uh, for a power. It has an SMA female connection for the antenna. It has an audio out for a speaker, audio in. This is for keying, right, so external mode. And then USB-C to charge as well as... Uh, an auxiliary I.O. port, which I am um, not familiar with the I.O. port system. But anyway, it is, like I said, pretty much entirely 3D printed. It's done pretty well. And let me give it an antenna before I turn this on. It does seem to come with a dummy load that's always attached to it, even when it's in the bag. So I'm guessing that the concern is that you will turn this on accidentally in a bag, and then you might, might damage the radio, and we don't want that to happen. So... I always leave the dummy load or an antenna connected. All right, so lifting this up, you get a computer-like screen. It reminds me of those old, uh, not a speak and spell, but something when I was a kid, uh, as far as computers go. It's got a relatively small screen. You don't really need a lot. A speaker, a series of indicator lights, and then a, a laptop-ish keyboard. Laptop keyboard is a, is a little rough. It's, it's not a, a joy to type on. But it's, it's not modified. This, this is like a laptop keyboard. It literally has play, pause buttons, and volume up, volume down kind of stuff. Like It's not modified. It doesn't have the silk screening for the controls for this radio anywhere on it. So I'm going to push the button on the back to start it up. It's going to go through a power cycle. It's going to give you the little display there. And this is what you see when you start it. It starts up in external mode. External mode's like a pass-through, right? Like if you were to give it uh, an audio signal for your radio, it would do the decoding for you and you could use it as a keyer. So to get it out of that, you click the external and it will go through the bands of operation. So it has 80 meters, 40 meters, and 20 meters. Now to go through the frequencies, you use the left control button and the right control button. And if you want to change the precision, right now we've got a, just a ton of accuracy here. We're going to remove characters. So now I've taken it down to 14.09. So let's go, there's like FT8. Yeah, you can hear FT8 noises, hopefully. All right, so this is way too fat of a tuning range to be able to pick anything up. So I'm gonna add a couple of digits. Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, see, now I did it. Now I gotta go back and figure out where's that. I was on six. And I'll add a couple more, and now I'll slide up. Okay, there's somebody. I can hear CW happening. The way this decode works is, it's it's basically the bandwidth of like single sideband. It's a huge, huge wide bandwidth. So if there's a lot of signals, it gets a little difficult. But you tune around, oh, there it was, until the CW in light comes on. On your first startup, it'll immediately start collecting speed of that signal and then it'll try to decode it on the screen. So let's give it a second. It's doing its collection duty right now. And then it may come back and it'll say 18 words a minute or something along those lines. There he is. Oh, okay, 23 words per minute. And then it's going to immediately start decoding. This is not a fantastic signal, though, because he kind of comes in and out. We're hearing more CW out of the speaker, but we're not seeing the, the actual brain, if you will, of the of the device seeing the, the CW. So what you can do in that case is add a... Oh, see, I just did it again. You get used to it, I promise. So let's add two. Go back up to seven. And kind of go up or down a little bit until we more accurately see the decode. In this case, it just might not be strong enough signal to pull it in. Yeah, see, he's he, he's not. it's not happening. And so what will happen is when you do CW... People aren't always going to be on the perfect 
frequency that you're listening to. They might be off a little bit, up or down a little bit. This device really wants to know exactly the 1300 kilohertz tone of that CW. That's exactly the, the, frequent, the, the hertz range it's looking for for that decoded signal to come in. See, somebody's close, but we're not getting them. So, that's a loud signal. See, we're losing them. That's a huge signal. And this is one of my problems with this device, or, or at least I, I haven't figured it out and enough to make it effective, useful for me, is I'm scanning all over the place. I'm hearing CW and I'm not seeing this light come on because if it's not decoding, we can't really work it. And so you start playing this game where you're changing frequency accuracy and, and granularity of that frequency, that the, the tuning, if you will. So I'm as almost as granular as you can get, and we're hearing a signal. I'm scanning. You can hear the tone changing. You can hear the tone of that CW change as I'm going through the freak, the band pass, or the pass band. And then nothing. I, I've lost it. And I find that this is what I do with this radio more than anything, is I, I hunt for a signal. I don't, I can't f get the device to decode it. And then I, I move on to the next one when the CW station kind of disappears. And that's, and that's kind of been my experience. I'm literally just scrolling through here. Mind you, these are all signals I can copy on my ear out of the speaker. And it's, it's not seeing it. I want to mention a big thank you to Dawn, a local ham who actually reached out to me after seeing the Huntsville Ham Fest video that I made with the Nomad. And so thank you, Dawn, for letting me borrow this radio. I kept it for a very long time. I tried to use it many evenings on 40 meters, and I, I was not able to make a contact, seriously. And so the latter half of this video, you're going to see part of a live stream that I did with a lot of other you know people on it to try and get a contact. And we still weren't really successful there either. And so that, that brings me to a really good point that I think I need to make. I appreciate you all watching my videos. I try to be as objective as possible because I know, and you should know, I don't like all radios, right? I, of course I don't. I think a lot of them are cool. You know, they've got a, a little bit of interest in, in, in it for me, but the, the vast features that many radios have, I mean, I'm just, I'm just not that big of a fan of some of this stuff. But I try to think about you, the watcher, and think, who is the, who is the, the customer for this? Who is the user for this? And, you know, I try to present it in a way, I think, because there's a person out there. Now, admittedly, with the MMX Nomad, it's a turnkey radio. It runs off of a solar panel. It has a battery when you get the kit. So you can use this as a, as a portable radio. And Don, N5SKT, and as someone on the, uh, on the Discord talks about this, it's kind of almost designed like you would have two of these, and, and, and you talk to your buddies with them. So I think Prepcom knows their market. I think they know that it's a smaller Venn diagram slice of a market, and, and they really made the product for that. It's not for me. It may not be for a lot of folks, but I, I know that there are some people out there, and I have a feeling that if you are persistent with using it and you, you actively do take it out and use it in the way it's intended, I'm sure you can get the contacts that you're looking for for. Now, of course, it, this is probably not a device about making random contacts and filling out a log. It's for preparedness-minded people that want to use Morse code in that preparedness. And again, it's probably very specialized and, and form-fitted for that. I just had my own issues with it. So that's what I'll leave you. Keep in mind, think of who this is for and what it's all about. It's probably not for you, but there's somebody out there undoubtedly who's going to be interested in it. There we go. You can almost tell from the tone of the station that it's going to work or not. And now he's gone again. So my, he might have just been replying to somebody. And and here, this is literally what I do with this. The whole, the whole time I've had it is dive around, looking for a signal, 
finding something, getting it roughly tuned in, and then to have them disappear on me. And that's even with Parks on the Air, right? All right, we got a new station, but it's locked in at 14 words from the last person we copied. So you have to hit the space bar so it collects data again. And then it's got to wait until they come back uh, to process the new words per minute. So it's, it's often going to work best if you find somebody who's going to be operating for a little while because your, um, your big, there we go. Okay, I, I think he's, oh, is he just chasing? Shoot. I got so excited I found a station that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't check to see if he was the activator or not. But basically, okay. K-A-5-E. So it got that. You can't even hear the other station, so they're, they're pretty light. Let's just wait here a minute and see if he comes back. All right, that station is in Texas, if that's K-A-5-E. Let's hope they come back. Okay. All right, CQ Poda. Okay, good. So that's working. VE7 VAK. Okay, so we got a different, that was a different one. Oh yeah, okay, he's on the Poda spots. He's in Arizona. All right, so this is how you do this now. So we got to go in here and we're going to enter his call sign. VE7, what was it? VK, VAK. Okay, V, then finish. So now he's in. All right, so this is this might actually work, guys. Hold hold on here. This is getting exciting. Um, uh, this is like the first <laughs> successful attempt I've had at this. I hope he stays for a while because you got a good path to him. So we're locked in. He's at 14 words a minute. It's V E seven, V A K. Good. All right. All right. Simple, simple stuff. So dit dit. I couldn't hear the other side of it. Let's see if he, he does see it. Okay, yeah, he's, he's working a pileup, great. Perfect, all right, here we go. I'm gonna answer him with the answer button. This is the, the most exciting thing. You can't stop it? All right, so a couple of things that I, I've learned now uh, doing another menu walk. I didn't realize it had such a verbose answer. We don't, we don't want that. So we're going to go to micro programs, and I'm going to do C sharp, which should be my call sign. Right? Yeah. So let's finish that. Um, wait, what? Okay, let's edit this one. And this should be the transmitter on and off i'm on seven zero five one six it is oh it's not even eight o'clock yet we still got some time but i want to start calling cq to see if i'm actually making it out um i i have gotten reverse beacon picked up multiple times on this radio it's just it's just locking down a contact i haven't been successful with so i'm i'm trying to uh i'm trying to 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 lock one in couldn't couldn't get the potas so we're we're gonna have to do this the uh, the old fashioned way where you point you point an entire live stream at it until we solve the problem. <laughs> Does that one have the requirement of you being like at thirty six hundred hertz? Yes. Before it starts decoding. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, it does, Don. That has actually been one mm. of my uh, my biggest issues is that it's it's tonal, so you can almost tell when you're scanning up and down the frequencies where the CW tone like it uh, that's a speaker, right? So hold on. Uh, that's a speaker right there, mm -hmm. and I will hear the CW coming out of that speaker, and I'm like, oh, that's perfectly copable, copyable uh, CW, and that speaker is not great. It's more or less just to know if you're kind of in the ballpark, and I'm like, let's do this. What's the problem? Go start the decode. Make it happen, and it's like, nah, -uh. you got you to gotta scan up or down until you find that. I think it's 1,300 right. kilohertz specifically is the tonal uh, 
I don't hear anybody directly on the frequency. I've been listening. So I'm going to I'm going to do the thing. We got a little bit of ritty, but I think we're off. So you, you you hit this button. It says call. Check this out. Ready? So I click it again and it's only going to call CQ once. And so it's CW out, right? But my head it should do DE now. Or K. Yeah, okay, now it's done. So hopefully somebody goes directly on frequency. Don't futz about being off frequency like a like a good CW operator might, a couple of kilohertz up or down. Just right on my frequency. I just got a hand alert that uh, KI6 and AZ is... Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, I got picked, picked up. up. Yeah, I got picked up on reverse beacon in uh, San Jose, it looks like. Hearing you 579 out of Carson City, Nevada. Come back then. Somebody just go ahead. It's not going to... I'm not I'm not really like copying like head copy right now. We're just we're doing the we're using the uh the old nomad here to do the work. I'm gonna do it again. Here we go. Okay. We're 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 dropping oh. What's going on here? Do the thing. Do your job. Why? <laughs> Joseph, it's not about being confident in CW. Nobody's gonna care. Just you get your call sign. We'll count. Yeah. We'll call it. We'll count it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, it's not transmitting now. Hold on. I'm gonna have to do the power restart. And if you're doing its job for it. And honestly, that that's that helps me sometimes to, like, you got a device in front of you, and then you you sit and you and you watch it, and it gives you the confidence to go. Yeah, you know, that's a this, that's a this, that's a, and you're able to do it. Yeah. So it'll it'll has a buffer, so you can type ahead. Well, that's been my experience with the Nomad. I did not make a contact. I had a relative difficult time with it. I think if it was really one of my few radios that I had, and I and I was really dead set on doing this specific type of CW operation, that I would have a go at it, and I'd probably have fun. Again. You got to know what you're looking for, but I'm putting it out there because it was a curiosity. People had asked me, what's up with that, you know, cyber deck looking radio? And well, there you have it. It's the MMX Nomad. It's made by Prepcom. The link will be in the video description and you can check it out. Another big thank you to my local ham bud, Don, Donald, for letting me check out the radio. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody.